Today we will discuss about dynamic hip screw. The mode of action of dynamic hip screw is sequential collapse at the fracture site when joint is loaded. You can see the x-ray of a dynamic hip screw. Now we can discuss about the parts of a dynamic hip screw. It has got a side plate and a barrel. And the barrel and side plate will make an angle of 130 degree or 135 degree. And it has got a sliding hip screw which is inserted into the barrel. And it has got a threads at the tip of the hip screw and there is a locking mechanism. What is the optimum sliding distance? Usually the optimum sliding distance is 25 millimeter. If sliding distance is more than 25 millimeter, that will result in implant failure. If sliding distance is less than 25 millimeter, it will prevent the collapse at the fracture site. The minimum length of DHS screw is calculated as thread length plus optimum sliding distance plus standard barrel length that is 22 plus 25 plus 38 comes as 85 millimeter. And the mode of action is conscial collapse at the fracture site when the joint is loaded and the indications are endotrochandric fracture and basal neck of femur fracture. Here you can see the DHS side plate with the 4.5 mm screw. The whole arrangement of DHS plate is staggered. Why? Because it will help for even distribution of force among the implant and the bone when it is loaded and it will prevent the implant failure. Next is dynamic condylar screw. It is designed originally for supracondylar or intracondylar fracture femur. It has got a barrel and a plate and angle between barrel and plate is 95 degree. There is no sliding mechanism for this screw. The mode of action is neutralization mode and uses a reverse oblique type of intertrochandral fracture and subtrochandral fracture femur. That's all for today. Thank you.